the slideshow. Slideshow. Oh, and we got a special guest tonight, all the way from a foreign country. I don't even know the name of it. Uh, this is Dr. Blue, and Blue has been all over the world. She's traveled everywhere. She knows just about everything, and she gives a lecture series and TED Talks across the country. And so tonight, she has volunteered to show us one of her famous slideshows and to narrate it. So what we want to know, what do you guys want to hear from Dr. Blue? What is it, what, is, what have you been pondering? What questions about life or the meaning of life or what places would you like to hear about? Could be a location, could be an idea, could be something you have a question about. World peace. World peace. Can we talk about world peace tonight? World peace, yeah. I believe in my archives, Yuba. Can you pull that up? Yuba is my assistant this <laughs> evening. Thank you so much for coming out. I know a lot of people think that slideshows are a bit square, but really they're coming back and the color is so well preserved in slideshows. Mm. So Yuba, let's get started on how world peace came about. <laughs> now the first conference I believe took place in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That it did. Now, you know, we had a many strong uh, voices that wanted to be heard and, and accusations and theories on what world peace should look like. So, it, you know, at the beginning, it was a little bit of feathers getting ruffled here and there. But eventually, they sat down and started to draw up just how this world peace might possibly come about. Slide two, please, Yuba. <laughs> now these conferences <laughs> really dragged on for many, many hours. And you know, back then we didn't really mix hospitality with conferences. Well, this was the beginning of that. Oh, they had happy hours, they had hors d'oeuvres. It was just a splendid time. And of course, with so many heated topics on the table, they certainly needed something to express a little of the steam that was building up underneath shirts and collars and skirts. Yes, women were a very big part of the beginning of the world peace treaties and which countries would be involved and who would represent who where. Yes, actually this woman here in the far left, she brought her tailor along. I thought that was rather interesting. <laughs> Wanting to be all of that in a bag of chips. <laughs> yes, Yuba. Now, so, uh, do we have any questions while we're on slide two? No? Nah? Then Yuba, we'll go on to slide three, please. So now this slide depicts how it actually played out in the different countries. You know, you had your, your um, Norwegian and Swedish sides and how what they were coming together with, with what they needed protected, you know, borders and what they needed for their soldiers. And, and we had the Asian countries represented. Yes, and then I'm not quite sure what the tussle was, but Somebody was actually shot <laughs> in one of the conferences and dragged out by her hair. We didn't mention any names. We had security on scene, but it didn't seem to happen. The bullet came so fast, and the gun wasn't even smoking. <laughs> any questions for this slide? Why does it look like it's blowing up? Why does it look like what, darling? <laughs> Throwing up, <laughs> that could be a very good possibility. <laughs> I thought he was clearing his throat, but you know, from slide two, all oh, that little drinky poo they were doing, I think it got the best of him. <laughs> and you, but slide four, please. Now, this is how world peace treaties actually started to play out. Oh, they were on fire. All of the countries came together around the big round conference table. And the, and the spittle was just flying. This one wanted this word, and this one wanted it to go this way. And 
Of course, you know, the egos and the prides are bouncing back and forth. It was amazing we got anything in order for these world peace treaties. <laughs> oh, but they did try their best. And, you know, at that time we didn't have the um, metal detectors. So this fella snuck in a rifle. And he thought he was going to, oh, we've got a question in the back. Yes, madame. So, I know I recognize that person. Could you go back to slide two? He was a very oh. famous ecological oh. professor. No, certainly. Yuma, slide two, please. <laughs> And you're so correct. <laughs> you did recognize our Cuban uh, uh, Castro there within the blue shirt. Yes, Castro was was mostly you know on time and always present for all of these conferences. And and of course he brought that favorite rum of his and those cigars, and they were just passed around freely. Even the women part took in the, in the rum and some of the cigar smoking. Oh, yes, Cuba. Such a, a country that we have really not established ourselves in. And it's so beautiful and the people are so warm. It really is a shame. Any other questions? Well, I was curious. I think was it slide three you mentioned the Norwegians and the Swedes. Yes. And with the man getting sick, I thought, well, maybe... Maybe he had some ludicrous. <laughs> ah, I have a bonus slide that will cover that, my dear, excellent minds. You, but can we have the bonus slide, please? <laughs> Quite a bit of that ludicrous was going around. I believe this was before we saw the little upchuck incident that this brilliant child caught. And there you have it. Oh my goodness. You know, some people just love it. I believe it's an acquired taste. Don't you think so? I uh, lived in Minnesota for quite a few years there at the university. And ooh, I must tell you, yeah, it wasn't really my cup of tea, that ludifisk. So there you have it, the peace treaties in the entirety. What a wonderful crowd you've been. Thank you so much. All right, that was fun. Keep running more round.